attention, son. This is for your own good. You know the name, Watts, a section of South LA. I thought it'd make a nice informational lesson, but the library books I researched prefaced the discussion apologetically with the 1965 riots which have come to define Watts in the public mind. Not many people know it has a history as its own city founded by blue collar workers and railroad workers and immigrants in the early 1900s. Today, transit TV viewers will know that history too. Like other parts of the Southland, Watts started out as a rancho, a personal land grant from the King of Spain. Rancho Tohuata, the local Indian word for low bluffs, was a gift in 1820 to Anastasio Avia, a retired soldier. It was only 3,600 acres, but well located midway between the town of Los Angeles and the harbor at San Pedro on the coast. Stagecoast travelers between those two destinations needed a midway rest stop, so Rancho Tuata began to grow. In the 1880s, heirs of Avia began selling off strips of land to investors. One of them was named Charles Watts, a Midwesterner who lived in Pasadena and bought 220 acres. But arriving immigrants needed housing. There were two building booms around the turn of the century, and investors who bought chunks of land now subdivided their property for housing tracks. And then came the railroad builders, but they needed land to lay their tracks on. Railroads meant money, so Watts and other property owners donated free right-of-way land for the Pacific Electric Railway to come through the heart of old Rancho Tawata and bring customers. Watts Junction was named for the Watts family who donated most of the land. It serviced tracks running between LA and San Pedro and also spurs down to Santa Ana, Newport, Hermosa, and Long Beach. Urbanization had begun. Many of the new arrivals were Mexican laborers. There were also Europeans, Germans, Italians, Greeks, Scots, even Japanese, and later black Southerners who worked the railroads. But town planners made mistakes. They didn't tie in the street patterns with streets of adjoining towns. Also, they created long, narrow lots, 25 feet wide by 130 feet deep, so that people could have stables behind their homes. Horse and buggy was the main mode of transport back then, but after the advent of the automobile, narrow lots were less desirable. Still, properties were advertised as a dollar down and a dollar a week, and people snapped them up. And because of the busy railroad station, locals called Watts the hub of the universe. Now, there's more to the story than I have time for in this lesson. Schools and stores and churches were built, and the area of 1,400 people incorporated as its own city in 1907. They chose the name Watts after the railroad station, which put the city on the map. Nineteen years later, in 1926, citizens voted to consolidate with their larger neighbor to the north, Los Angeles. I'm the Transit TV teacher, Justin Dior.